endometrium lining how thin is thin when it comes to conceiving naturally or through any kind of treatment so i am dr archana s ayanathan medical director of dr archana ivy from chennai so today i am going to talk about thin endometrium uh, and uh, how what kind of endometrium really produces a pregnancy right endometrium is the bed where the embryo is going to sit and grow that is baby is going to sit and grow the egg and the sperm meet in the fallopian tube and after it is getting fertilized it is going to grow and travel and go get attached to the endometrium so this is the bed where the baby is growing so the optimal size of the endometrium to achieve a pregnancy should be somewhere around 8 mm to 12 mm this is what we assess in the ultrasound and uh, with the recent advances in the ultrasound we have this color flow where we can put color flow for the endometrium and see what is the blood flow in the endometrium so this blood flow is also graded as grade 1 2 3 or a b c type 1 type 2 type 3 so this grading system tells us till which zone of the endometrium the blood flow is reaching for example if the blood flow is farther away from the endometrium then the conception rates are little less if it is touching the first zone then the conception rates are good and if it is deep inside the endometrium then the conception rates are very good so 8 to 12 mm about 12 mm we call this as thick endometrium or hypertrophic endometrium so for hypertrophic endometrium again the treatment line varies and that will be spoken as a different video for thin endometrium what are the treatments available and what is the cost first see thin endometrium means that the estrogen supply in the body is less so what happens before you bleed so there is a cohort of eggs which is recruited in the last uh, phase of your menstrual cycle and uh, the next uh, bleeding when it comes on the first day one egg starts to grow for 20 mm size and the process is going to take for about 14 to 21 days so every month one egg grows into a dominant follicle right so this dominant follicle produces estrogen hormone so when this estrogen hormone is produced in the body when the level reaches about 150 to 300 then there is a negative feedback which is growing going to the brain saying that you know i have estrogen supply enough estrogen supply in my body my endometrium is thick well enough to have a baby so stop producing the follicular stimulating hormone and start giving me more of luteinizing hormone so there is a lh surge and the egg breaks and ruptures to have a ovulation so this estrogen is the main thing which goes and acts on the endometrium and makes your endometrium thick enough to hold a baby so generally if the egg is not mature enough or if the quality of the egg is low that is when your amh is low then people tend to have a thin endometrium other reasons for thin endometrium are if you are suffering from pcos that is polycystic ovarian disease again the quality of the egg might be less and that will in turn give you a thin endometrium because the supplementation of the hormones is not there from your own body like as i said estrogen is very important for the growth of endometrium and this can in turn lead to thin endometrium and what are the treatments available for thin endometrium see if you say if you think about natural ways of treating your or thin endometrium the first and foremost thing what you should be doing is you should not have too much of stress so stress affects the endometrium and the blood flow of the endometrium is decreased so that in turn is going to uh, decrease the amount of estrogen going to the endometrium and when it comes to food there are certain kinds of food which have phytoestrogens we don't know we don't have enough studies to say that taking these phytoestrogens will increase the endometrium lining but some of them say that soya beans the soy uh, products and you know uh, these kind of things have phytoestrogen that can in turn like uh, to a certain extent increase the endometrial lining and uh, when it comes to the medical treatments uh, for uh, thin endometrium is that first we try giving them oral estrogen hormonal uh, medicines and see if the endometrium lining is improving then we start with the vaginal estrogen uh, medicines and see if the endometrium lining is growing and if the oral and the vaginal is not uh, uh, working out then we have these uh, newer uh, uh, medications like you know where you can apply it as a gel or a cream on non hairy areas and those kind of medications also contain estrogen and this can in turn increase the endometrium lining so when the medical treatments don't work we have options like prp platelet rich plasma where the blood taken from the lady's body is like uh, centrifuge only the platelets are uh, separated from it and these platelets are in turn intrauterinely deposited inside the uterus so this will again uh, lead to increase in the endometrium 
So after PRP, there are uh, certain things that you know, this PRP itself can be introduced uh, subendometrially that is through hysteroscopic guidance, we can uh, uh, put it in the endometrium that is below the endometrium, subendometrium. So this can in turn lead to neovascularization and uh, new blood vessels forming and enrichment of the endometrium. So ideally 8 to 12 millimeter should be the thickness of the endometrium when you are ovulating after ovulation especially okay. So the triple line 8 millimeter endometrium with good vascularity is good enough to have a pregnancy anything below 8 is going to make it very difficult to conceive.